My guest today is Kevin Pilch. Kevin, how are you doing? I'm great, David. It's been a long time. It's good to catch up it's with you been finally. Way too long. Um, what have you been up to? Uh, well, uh, the last time we talked, I was working on the Roslyn team. Since then, um, I have switched and took a little foray through .NET tools and the project system. Uh, and now I'm the group engineering manager for .NET app frameworks. So that's um, ASP.NET Core, WinForms, um, all of the various app models in ASP.NET Core from uh, Razor Pages, MVC, Blazor, uh, gRPC, the server tech stack, uh, the Windows Forms stuff, and then data access through NMV Framework. So uh, that's, wow. that's what my team's responsible for these days. That's pretty much everything, isn't it? Um, well, not Xamarin and not WPF, um, but, but most of the rest, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I was you, were, you sent me a list of those things before, and I was really f interested in talking about uh, gRPC. And the reason I'm interested is because I know nothing about it at all. It's brand new to me. Can you tell me what is sure. gRPC? Uh, so gRPC is a uh, it's an RPC call system. Uh, RPC is. Uh, remote procedure call. So it's uh, it's a system for doing remote procedure calls between either two different processes on the same machine or frequently uh, between different machines in a data center. So if you're doing a microservices style architecture, you might call into a front end service and that might call other services within your data center. And oftentimes that'll happen through gRPC. Uh, for people that have a long history of uh, .NET use, you might have used WCF for something like this traditionally. Um, gRPC is something that evolved out of Google uh, it no longer stands for Google RPC. Uh, well, what does so, it stand for now? Uh, they actually kind of make a little bit of a joke of it. Uh, every time they do a new release, they change what the G stands for. So one of the things in the release notes is is what the G stands for each time. So um, so officially it stands for nothing. Uh, but I'm going to assume it stands for GART. Yeah, it could be. We could we could try to get that to happen for one of the release. I think one of them was giraffe and like a, so they they just have a good time with it. Um, but basically, gRPC is a, a, like I said, it's a system for calling between different processes. Some of the things that are interested about it is that it's a it's a contract first system. So typically, you describe uh, what messages you want to pass, what uh, what parameter types those messages are in what's called a, a dot proto file. And then the dot proto file defines the serialization format that happens over the, the wire. Um, so there's, they, they call it proto buff um, as the serialization format. And that means that you have uh, efficient binary serialization and interoperable serialization between all the different tech stacks that support gRPC. So my team works on uh, .NET gRPC, um, but there's also a C++ gRPC implementation, a Go one, a Java one, a Rust one, a Node one. So whatever uh, technology you happen to be using, uh, uh, you can have a client in one technology stack, a server in one technology stack, you share this proto file in between, which defines what the messages are and, and what the parameters of the messages are. And um, and then you can interop between the different languages. So I'm assuming that each one of these uh, stacks, like the C-sharp stack, for example, it's going to transform your message into some standard format uh, when it serializes it, something that everybody understands. Is it turning into text, for example, or some binary that's a standard? What happens? What's yeah. the magic that makes it interoperable? Um, yeah, it's actually it's a it's a binary format, and so uh, as you when you define a message and, and a type in it, you say, well, the, you know, the first field in the message is an ID, and it's a 64-bit int, and and that sort of thing, and then uh, you run a, a, a protobuf compiler that generates a bunch of C# -sharp code that knows how to serialize and deserialize to the right wire format to to make those gRPC calls. Hmm. Is it how is it different from just standard web services, which are also interoperable? Um, the thing that is somewhat nicer about gRPC, uh, a couple things. So one is 
the binary serialization can make it more efficient. So you can kind of compact stuff down a little bit more. Um, it also takes advantage of the, the HTTP, HTTP2 stack, uh, which has stuff like binary headers and uh, bidirectional streaming between from client to server and, and back and forth, as opposed to HTTP1.1, which doesn't. Um, so that's kind of on the, the underlying HTTP stack. And then on the serialization format, um, JSON type web APIs, uh, like re typical REST APIs, are interoperable uh, if you know what to expect and, and how to call them. But there's not, a lot of times there's not a great way of describing what that is. Some people will use Swagger for that, um, that they either generate from code. Uh, the thing that is interesting about gRPC is that you typically start from the contract and have something that you can share with people from other tech stacks as the starting point as opposed to writing a bunch of C-sharp code and then trying to extract what the schema is with something like, like Swashbuckle. Hmm. Okay, so it's, it's that proto file that uh, everybody understands that. Once you have yep. that, then you can understand the, the message that's coming over regardless of where it came from or what language generated. Yep. Um, and you're, I imagine since you're uh, the .NET guy that you're building tooling for things like Visual Studio to make it easier to produce these and to consume them, is that right? That's right. Um, well, we, we're actually not doing a whole lot in the tooling space. We're mostly just relying on kind of this, the standard open source tooling. So there's a, a TextMate grammar that VS can use that, that gives you basic protobuf serialization. The thing we've kind of done that's a, a little bit more interesting is in a, a project, you can add a service reference to a gRPC protobuf file, and it knows how to generate all the code for you and, and, and that sort of thing. So we've built some tooling to make it easier to consume proto files. As for writing them, um, we leverage kind of the standard TextMate grammar that gives you basic indentation and coloring and, and that sort of thing. But uh, but it's a pretty simple file format, so we haven't had to do a whole lot of work on the on the tooling for it there. Okay, yeah, this um, uh, this sounds a little bit like these uh, SOAP WSDL files, right? They receive a little bit, those yeah. and Automatically generate something to consume them. Yeah, it's the same uh, as like an also like an open API Swagger file, right? A Swagger.json file. Um, the the difference, like I said, is which comes first, the the service or the contract, right? It, with gRPC, you typically write the contract first. With some of those other things, you write the service, and then something tries to guess what the what the schema is, right? And generate the the SOAP file or the the open API Swagger file. So if I, I want to get started on this, what's and I'm, I'm, I'll speak to myself since I'm mostly a .dot .dot developer. I want to create my proto file. Is this a, just a matter of file new service, or is there more to it than that? Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, yeah, file new file and, and make it a proto file. You'll get the IntelliSense and stuff in there. Um, we have a, a template bunch... built into Visual Studio, or do I need to uh, add some NuGet package? Um, you have, uh, I don't actually know the answer to that, whether we oh. I have a template for the, the proto file or not. Um, typically, you we start with, uh, a, depends on whether you're going to be a client or a server, first of all. But assuming you're, you're going to be a server, um, typically you start with an ASP.NET Core app. Um, and then you can, you in your, your uh, startup, you can add gRPC the same way that you would add MVC or add you know, razor pages or, or something like that. You can add gRPC as endpoints um, and that'll uh, that'll get you started. There's a whole bunch of documentation um, that that we've written in the docs.ms or docs.microsoft.com slash ASP.NET um, around using gRPC and, and all the different things that you can do there. Um, James Newton King, who you might have heard of from uh, from Newtonsoft.json. Um, has been one of the primary people on my team who's been working on this. And so uh, he's done a fantastic job of, uh, there's a few blog posts out there, and then there's also tons of, of great documentation to get going on okay. gRPC. I'm looking at the documentation right now. It's right on the front page of the ASP.core apps. Remote procedure calls, apps, G gRPC services. And I actually see that James Duton King is one of the authors. Of oh, the yeah. First one here. <laughs> yeah. Is this the best place to get started as I'm learning it? Someone like me that's a total novice at this? Yeah, definitely. That's a that's a great place to get started. 
Um, very cool. What uh, what have we not talked about that we should have? Um, I guess one of the things that's uh, that that I always like to kind of talk about a little bit is performance. Um, one of the the things that's interesting, like I said, is the ability to have slightly some some higher performance stuff there. And so one of the things that we've been working on is uh, making our our gRPC stack higher performance. We've done a bunch of benchmarking and uh, contrasting it with some of the other implementations that are out there. And I think um, with the .NET 5 release, um, we are now like the second fastest gRPC implementation, just a little bit behind Rust, but ahead of just about all the other languages that are out there from Go, C++, Java. Um, and so, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're looking for a high performance tech stack, um, uh, you know, in like in other places, uh, gRPC on .NET Core is a, a great place to be. Is it is it always using HTTP to communicate, or are there options for other types of uh, protocols? Right now, we're all, always using HTTP. Um, there's kind of two options. The default and the most common is using HTTP2, uh, but there are some places where HTTP2 is not supported. Um, for example, if you're a JavaScript client in a browser, um, even though browsers speak HTTP to web servers, uh, they don't expose any HTTP2 APIs to JavaScript within the browser. Uh, and so in that case, there's a, there's a system for kind of downgrading gRPC to run over HTTP 1.1. It's called gRPC web. Uh, and that's something that we see. Interesting. I, I think um, also uh, I'm thinking back to the days when I was first learning remoting and uh, for inter-processes calls on the same machine, typically we wouldn't use HTTP uh, because of speed. Uh, is that still, but now is that is that a solved problem? Do we still use HTTP2 to communicate from one process to another on the same machine? Okay. Okay. Thank you for reminding what the technologies were. It's been so long since I've worked with remoting, but I've forgotten most of what I learned. Uh, well, Kevin, thank you very much. I've learned a lot here. This is a topic that, as I said, I'm brand, brand new to. So, just like every other time I talk to you, I've learned something new. All right. Well, thanks a lot. You stay safe.